So that's one thing out here, friends. There ain't much. There's some a, a road, some telephone poles, power lines, and we're headed to Pioneer Saloon where some history happened. Some interesting history, so stay tuned. waited three days at this saloon for the news of whether Carol Lombard survived the plane crash or didn't survive the plane crash. It happened right here in the Pioneer Saloon in Good Springs, Nevada. And as you saw, this is a happening place, friends. And he said that he hiked up to the top of the mountain and that there's still airplane wreckage up there. And so that would be something that I would want to do one day. I can't do it today, but maybe someday soon I can. And wow, that would be incredible to be able to go up there and do that. I'll give you the, uh, the address and the telephone number and the website. Stay tuned, friends. Sure, thank you. So you're Tom. Hike to the red. That's correct. How yeah. far was that? It's seven miles as the crow flies. Yeah, it's outrageous. They hit about 8,700 feet up, and we're about 37 feet here, so 3,700 feet here. So you can imagine how treacherous that hike can be. But uh, that was in 1942. Carol Lombard was on a war bond tour. Clark Gable actually uh, sat here because the search party gathered here, and they went by a uh, horse back to pull the remains out. So he waited here to get her remains, and so he, reportedly he was here for over 24 hours, he nodded off, made burn marks under the bar, and the pretty lady has been sitting here ever since, rubbing their fingers, making these grooves for where he sit. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah. And you brought back some wreckage. Yeah, there's actually a lot up there. The engine's up there, the landing gear, parts of the fuselage. Once you get up there, you realize why there's so much wreckage still up there. Yeah, because it's just huge. Yeah, it's so hard to and get there. It's so up hard there. to get there. To yeah. get it out would be just improbable. So you just brought a small piece Just out. a small piece. Okay. Big enough to, uh, to weigh me down enough to get there. <laughs> Uh, so that was like, you're saying you climbed 5,000 feet. Am, am I, I doing did, the math right? Yeah, well, not completely because I did drive a certain uh, oh, okay. way. So and it's. Then, it's and then it's, hiked another portion, and then, yeah. So how far did you actually walk, do you think? Uh, probably about a mile and a half, two miles of hiking. Yeah, okay. almost to the point where you need a rope, but. But now we're talking about four wheel drive up there, not a. Uh, to a certain point. Yeah. 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 But What's a it? vehicle couldn't, a regular Truck, vehicle couldn't. And then like a razor, and then hiking in another mile oh, and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's quite an undertaking. It's all right? day. Yeah. Wow. Right. And it's only seven miles. So, so which direction from here? Uh, so they took off from uh, McCarran Airport, which is actually Nellis Air Force Base now. Okay. And that was in Las Vegas. So they head on the other side of the mountain. So uh, from the bar, it'll be the north northwest-ish. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So it would be that direction yeah. over and over there. So I can see it if I walk out you can't see the crash site because they were, like it's I was saying, the they were coming from Vegas. Okay. Yeah. But reportedly, at the Phil Hotel, that which is gone now, um, they could see the glow from the fireball up there. Wow. So yeah, very sad. It is. Yeah. The only comforting thought is the fact that uh, when they when they crashed into the mountain, it was just over. Yeah. And the impact is just the whole entire yeah. plane just shredded. Yeah. So it was pretty tragic, a pretty horrible crash site. Then. Yeah. You're saying just no food. Yeah. It's even, not like you would picture a fuselage it was in, sitting there. No. It's just in 40, it, it happened in 42, and even now you can see the devastation that had a, that happened up there. So I mean, I, all the people I've been up there with, definitely you could tell it affected them. Wow. wow. Incredible. Man, thank you so much thank for you. that story, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah.
Yes, sir. And they can come out here and see this themselves. Yeah, by all means. And Have a beer. We got cold beer, too. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. So, right here, friends, that's the cigar burns from Clark, Clark Gable nodding off. In fact, I'm going to turn the light on. Right there, you can see it. What's new? From him sitting here trying to wait. Like you said, people have touched it over the years. I need to get to like Maybe a dish is large. No, I mean, uh, so I was asked to say, so we need to be here. We need to be here as a man. So, friends, it happened right here in Good Springs, Nevada, just outside of Las Vegas. Okay. It's here, not treated. Right here. Piece of the records. So you were here for the hundred year anniversary in 2013. So friends, that is a piece of the wreckage from her airplane that he brought down. And the wreckage is still up there. You can see there's one of the engines. All those pieces are still up there. Incredible. So now, you know the rest of the story, friends. You heard it right here from the spa guy. So you tighten up now and come down here. I'm, on, I'm planning on hiking to it. I won't do it this trip, but next trip I will hike up to it. Bet you. All right, friends. So if you look right here, I am where the arrow is at the bottom. Mount Potosi Mountain is the highest peak right there. So the plane wreckage is up on top of that peak right there. And that's according to Tom, the guy that we just talked to in the bar. He said that it was the highest peak out there. And that is the highest one. So Clark Gable waited right here for them to bring her body back. And they went by horseback from here up there to recover the bodies and brought them back to here, friends. Good Spring, Nevada. So friends, it's a sad story, and a lot of you probably are not even aware of the story. It happened uh, a little over 75 years ago. It was a DC-3, just like this. And this is Carol's, you can see, this is from her grave. It happened on January 16th, 1942. She was uh, doing things related to the war, war bonds, to raise money. And this is the crash site up on the side of the mountain. This is uh, back then, and now this is current day, the crash site. And there was a story about a corn, coin flip that they were flipping coins because there was only one seat on the airplane. And they were actually going to, two of them were going to take a train and one of them was going to fly. At the last minute, they ended up with three seats. And her mom, this is her mom with Clark and her, was superstitious about this because it was a lot of threes in this thing. It was flight three. Carol was 33 years and three months old and there were three in the party. And it was a DC-3, but they took the flight anyway. The other person was a press agent uh, that was a friend of Clark and, and her. His name was Otto Winkler, and he passed as well. And that's the guy that you see on the left right here. And during this uh, fundraiser for the war, she actually raised about $2 million. She was a huge star at the time and uh, was able to really raise a lot of money and unfortunately uh, died an untimely death. And this is her and Clark. I showed you this picture before. And then at Mount Potosi, there is a, um, a memorial to them. There's a lot of other people died too. There was 22 individuals who perished on this mountain on January 16th, 1942. And Flight 3, including Carol Lombard, 15 Army Air Corps pilots. They were all pilots, a crew of three, and three passengers. It was a, a bad day in 1942, friends. And there was one more thing that I wanted to bring up. Mount Potosi normally had a red beacon light flashing on it, but because it was World War II, they were concerned about Japanese warplanes that may attack the Western United States, so they had turned the light off. So friends, I told you that was the last thing I was going to tell you, but I thought there was one more little important little detail. The month before she passed, Pearl Harbor was attacked. Then she passed. 
Clark decided to join the military, and he became a aerial gunner in a flying fortress airplane. You know, the one that has the little, uh, the B-17 that has the, the turret that hangs down that's glass. He was a top gunner or side gunner in this case. He took more than, he also did photography at the same time. He took more than 50,000 feet of, of photography, flew five, at least five missions. They're saying there's missions that he flew that are not recorded because he didn't want anybody to know. So this guy was a bad A. And you know what I'm talking about. Clark Gable, friends, when he lost his wife to, to the war, he got in there and did something about it. And by the way, there's talk that Hitler and some of his minions had a high-dollar bounty on his head if they could capture him because they knew exactly who he was from the movies. So, friends, when he finally decided to uh, leave his commission in the military because he was old er. The one and only Ronald Reagan signed his discharge papers. That's right. Another American bad A. I just thought I'd throw that in there. So now you know the rest of the story, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Tighten up every chance you get. Clark sure did. (laughs) 